Buongiorno everybody. Welcome to my kitchen again today. We are continuing our quest of doing lots of pumpkin slash squash slash zucca recipes. So we are going to have some fun today because we're making some muffins. Some healthy muffins, but yummy muffins. Also, I just want to throw in there that um, I'm working on my sound. This is a bigger kitchen. So yesterday I found that this was a little tinny sounding. So I apologize for the sound. I got a new microphone and I can't get it working right yet. So by, t by tomorrow, I will sound much smoother, you know. But anyway, you still have me. I'm here. Buongiorno. Hello, everybody. Um, so yesterday we made that um, pasta with the zucca, with the big giant Kripnik squash. Um, today, I used the other last piece of it, and I've cooked it up. We're going to squish it up, and we're going to make some muffins with it. So I've got lots of goodies to put in it. But before we do that, I'm going to take a moment, and we are going to take the seeds that I took out. These are really nice roasting seeds. So I'm just going to take a little drizzle of oil here. I'm going to put a little bit here. makes it easier to work with. I'm just going to spread it around the bottom of my pan. I like this little pan. It's kind of goofy, but it's got ridges in it. So like, it's nice to roast things on because they don't kind of totally stick to the bottom of the pan. Let me grab a towel here to wipe my greasy hands off with. So I hope you all had a good day yesterday. Hope you made something good to eat. So right now, I'm gonna just take a minute, and right now my oven is warming up, so I've got everything rolling. So basically, when you take out the insides of your pumpkins or your big giant monster zucca squashes, um, just, you know, casually, calmly, fun, relaxing, embrace the, the seeds. <laughs> you know me, I like to embrace the stir, whether I'm stirring sauce or stirring my coffee, it really makes a difference. So just enjoy each little piece. Of course, I gotta get itchy when I'm doing this and my hands are gunky, but it's okay. This is, you know, the fun part, like when you stick your hand inside the pumpkin to clean it out, people throw away something that's really good for you. Do you know that pumpkin seeds um, have nine grams if I remember right, nine grams of protein in every ounce, which is basically like a tablespoon. That's a lot of protein. So, you know, forget those, you know, overly sweetened protein bars. Keep some pumpkin seeds on hand and just have a handful of those. And you've got energy, protein, fiber all at one time, just with some pumpkin seeds. It's pretty good. I actually bought some really nice roasted pumpkin seeds, organic, from my Misfits Market a while back. And I just started eating them recently. Wow, they're really good. And they're ugly, too, because they're kind of like, I don't know, they're kind of dark. I'm going to put some on top of these. You're going to see them in a minute. But boy, they are just, they, they're not too, you know, sometimes pumpkin seeds can be really hard to chew on. Those are so nice. Now, these, of course, have the the um, you know the outer shell on them and those are the kind that you kind of like you know roast them and salt them and and just the energy that you expend trying to chew off the, the the outside to get to the inside there's like a whole bunch of calories burned there so if you're on a diet eat whole pumpkin seeds and chew on them and you know all that stuff and get some protein at the same time and some exercise all right, almost done. This wasn't a huge, huge, you know, these these big squashes, even though they're huge, uh, the whole neck is meat, and it's only the very bottom that is got the hole in the middle, you know, in the bottom for the seeds. So now you can do two things. You can do something else with these seeds too. You can just let them dry out and then put them in a bag and save them for the next planting season, which I might do with a few of these. I have some with a nice, beautiful, organic um, spaghetti squash 
that was just a really nice looking one. So I figured that one makes nice seeds, you know? Um, so I saved some of those for my next garden. All right, and we're done. So what I'm gonna do right now, there's a little oil on the bottom of the pan and I'm just gonna sprinkle a smidge of sea salt while they're wet here. It's a pink Himalayan salt. And I'm just gonna stick these in the oven to roast. I'll just leave them in there long enough while we're baking here. All right, so ready to make some muffins? You gotta get the seeds done first. If you do stuff like that first, it's all done. And then, um, got the glasses on, I don't even need to see anything right now. Um, if you do the little things like, you know, we always put the seeds aside, oh, I'm gonna roast those later. You know, if you just do them real quick first, you saw that took me two minutes, quick sift through them, throw them in the oven, and now I can make my muffins and we're set to go. So I'm gonna get my big bowl. So we're gonna make these, you know, Dorina style, healthy, Italian style because we're using zucca. It's a nice. And in it, you know, a lot of recipes in Italy lately, they use, um, they add ricotta to the, to the baked goods or they add some yogurt, as they say, um, to their baked goods. And it just adds a moistness to it that's so nice. So we're gonna add a little yogurt because I have just enough for this recipe. So we are gonna use whole wheat flour today because I'm trying to be healthy. You can do this with white flour. The, the um, exchange is exactly the same. So use white flour, whole wheat flour. A lot of times if I want it to be a little bit lighter, I'll use half white, half whole wheat, or even there's that white whole wheat, which is really nice also. If you're not talking about like an angel food cake or some kind of pristine cake that really needs to be airy and light and fluffy, you can substitute or half and half your flowers at any time. It's still good and honestly, I prefer a nice dense cake or like cupcake or um, what do you call it? Uh, like a muff oh, muffin that we're making now, things like that or like the sweet breads. I like them to be nice and dense and moist. So you're gonna get a little bit denser with the whole wheat, so it just, it goes just perfect. So we're gonna do, now, I'm gonna double this recipe because I think I have more than one cup. Let me see here. My stuff is right here. Let me get a bowl and we're gonna smush it up and see how much I have. And then we will decide. Let's do this for a second. Sometimes we want a single batch. Sometimes we want a double batch. And sometimes we make with what we've got. So then we'll, we'll modify the recipe as such. So we're going to take out this nice fresh zucca. See, it's all, I cubed it and just boiled it for a little bit. And there we go. This is easily easy two cups. My base recipe calls for a cup, so we're going to double the recipe. And how do I know? <laughs> how do I know? Because I know. Let's see. This is, what is this? This is only a half cup. Easily. One, two, three. Yeah. Easy. And now I got my cup wet. Hold on. <laughs> got to scoop flour out with it because my whole cup measure is in the dishwasher. So we're using the half cup measure. Let's move that over there. All right, so we are going to use my squisher. Let's see, oh, we'll use my potato masher today. Let's make sure, just got out of the storage. We're just gonna mash this up. Now, because I didn't, I could have drained this and made it really dry, but I don't want it really dry. And I don't care if it's, you can puree it as, as much as you want. This is, it's got pretty soft pretty quick. Um, because this is nice and wet, I'll probably put like a tablespoon less of the milk in. But anyway, so that's ready to go. 
and we're gonna get my big bowl back. We're gonna start measuring out the flour. So since my basic recipe calls for, you know, just shy it like you know, two cup. We're gonna put about four cups of flour in. Actually, I'm gonna cut a little less because we're gonna put some other stuff in. So we're gonna put in um, two, three and a half cups. One. So that's a half. Two. One. And one and a half. Two. Two and a half. Three. Actually, no, we'll go three and a half. Okay. You know. The reason I go ahead and do things the way I do them is to show you that unless, like I said, unless you're making a fluffy angel food cake that has to be a little bit more precise or something like that, cooking is about love. And it's also just knowing when and where eventually you can, eh, we'll go a little half cup less here because we're going to throw some oatmeal in or whatever, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to throw in some oatmeal. So I'm going to put in, I don't want them to be oat muffins. I'm just going to throw like half a cup in just to get a little texture. You know, just for a little bit of health. And since while we're at it, got a little bit of wheat bran. So if we're going to go, might as well go all the way, right? I put in about, that was about a third. It wasn't, I didn't fill that up. We're going to put about a third cup of that in. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Oh, I can smell those seeds. They smell like pumpkin. We're gonna throw a little chia seed in. If I can open the bottle. Let's throw in about a third a cup of chia seeds. They're gonna like fluff up and so because we put the chia seed in now, I will leave all the liquid in because they do absorb some of the liquid. They can make something dry, but they can also make it moist because they hold the liquid. So it's kind of cool. So let's get a spoon. But I didn't get it ahead of time. I'm just going to mix this up a little. All right, we're going to put in a pinch of salt. Basically, it's a tea, it's a, what is it, half a teaspoon officially? I don't even know. Yeah, it's half a teaspoon. So that's like one, two pinches. I don't want it to be too salty. And that Himalayan sea salt's really nice and salty. <laughs> we're going to put in, you know, I didn't get a spoon. Excuse me a minute. Ta da! Got my spoon. Okay, we're gonna put in two, let's see here, two tea, well, two teaspoons of, of baking soda. One, never overdo it with the baking soda because baking soda has a strong flavor. So you don't wanna do that. Now with this, we can do sugar, but we don't really want to. So we're gonna put in some honey. And you know what else you can do? You can do maple syrup too. But honey's more, well, is more easily accept, accessible um, to people who are not in the United States. So let's see if I've got everything else. Well, let's put our spices in. So we're gonna put a bunch of spices in. I'm gonna show you my cool new spice rack. Ta-da, look at this. I got a whole door of spices. So we're gonna put in some allspice, some ginger, some nutmeg, some vanilla, and my cinnamon is over by the coffee because I like to put it on my coffee. So we're just gonna, we're gonna go heaviest on the cinnamon. It's probably a teaspoon. Probably want about two teaspoons of total spices in. You know, this is not coming out as fast as I want it to because it's really full. I just filled it. I buy big ones and then, okay. Come on, there we go. Probably a good teaspoon, hefty teaspoon. We're gonna put in just a little bit of allspice. So, okay, I'll tell you how much approximately. About a half and a shake of allspice. We're gonna put in some ginger, cause I like ginger. And ginger, actually, one has a nice flavor, but two has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. So that's really good. Healthy and yummy, can't beat that. We're just gonna put in a quarter teaspoon of um, cloves because they're really strong. And we don't want them to overpower. Okay, so we'll get those out of the way. Cinnamon, allspice, there we go. Ginger, oh, and my favorite. 
Well, I don't know if I can call any of them my favorites. I love them all, but you know, nutmeg. <laughs> Whoops, dropped my nutmeg. <laughs> Let's put some, uh, we'll put like half a nut in. This was actually kind of a small nut. I love doing it fresh. There's something in the smell when you're grating it. Come on. There you go. <laughs> um, it's just awesome. I love the smell of the nutmeg. Stir that in. Look at all the little specks in there with the chia and the spices. All right. So now we're going to start adding our wet stuff in. So let's, you know, let's do it all at once. Let's play with this. Let me put that to the side for a second. Let's take our zuka. We'll add the nut, the, um, had the eggs in, but we're gonna do them one at a time, so I'm doing them in the measuring cup here. Make sure there's no shells. So normally this would call for two eggs in a single recipe. I'm putting in four, because I'm doubling it. Oops, <laughs> this isn't big enough for two eggs. That would've gone everywhere. Okay, three and four. And then I'm gonna add the vanilla into the wetness. Oh, it didn't wanna come off. Can you tell it's been about, let's do two capfuls. It's like a teaspoon, heavy teaspoon. And we're gonna put in um, honey. So I have actually got a couple different kinds of honey here. This one is, I don't know what it is. This one is raw, my raw honey organic raw honey from Milford, New Jersey. Let's try some New Jersey honey. That one's really soft. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, there we go. It's not as solid as I thought. It's gonna all melt up anyway. Gosh, I got almost a half a cup. And I did the egg first because um, It'll help it, hopefully, help it. Come, yeah, see, it's not sticking as bad as it would have if I just put it in plain. Cool. Because I also have West Virginia honey. But today we're going to use New Jersey honey. Might as well throw in a little bit more. Okay. Oh, that looks, that honey smells so good. All right, and now we're going to put in half a cup of milk. And just for fun, we're going to throw in, hold on. I'm not used to not having my, my silverware drawer. It used to be right in front of me here, so i got to figure something out, get, get a little more prepared. I'm going to put in just like two spoonfuls of yogurt. Move those out there. Actually, let's put it back here so it's not in front of everyone. So I think I've got everything. Oil. I haven't put the oil in yet. That's what it was. See? Got to look in the, got to look on the list. Um, you can use any kind of oil in here. Um, you can use, you know, I never ever use vegetable oil. Um, I can use the sunflower oil I have back here, and actually I think, or you can use coconut oil, you can use olive oil. I do often use olive oil. Um, I love it. Today, since I've got extra heavier things in here, like the yogurt and all the whole wheat, I'm going to use a lighter oil, so I'm going to use the sunflower oil. So I'm going to put in a third cup. So this is, that's about a third. And there's another third because it's doubled. Okay, and that there, my lid so I don't lose it. And now I'm going to take this lovely spoon, break these eggs, and stir this all up. Oh yeah. And it doesn't really have to be stirred, you know, 100%. I just want to kind of get it started. Okay. So let's get the big bowl. We're going to mix it all together. 
And this really is best hand stirred. And look at how nice it just. A little bit of honey. And now I'm just gonna mix it all together. What happens when you um, put a big, like when you put this kind of a thing in a mixer, um, it, you can tend, you can almost over stir it. And if you do that, then you end up with a really tough, um, you know, like a real dense and tough cake. So you want it to be stirred and fully mixed together, like no wet, I mean, no wet, uh, dry, no wet, of course we're not all wet. You want all the dry spots to be wet and all the pieces to mix together, but you don't want it to be overly beaten. Look how pretty it is. And oh, if you could only smell this. So I do have a base, you know, there is a base recipe to this. Like the, my base recipe doesn't have yogurt in it. My base recipe doesn't have as many spices in it. But this is the way I do things. And you can add now other things to this if you want. You can add some golden raisins. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to make some without, and then I'm going to add some to the second half. You can add dried cranberries. Those are yummy. You can add, um, oh, check these. These are the pumpkin seeds. These are the pumpkin seeds I was telling you about. So they're kind of ugly. Some of them are kind of coated, dark coated, and some are yellowy. They're all different colors. But, mmm, they're crunchy, but they're a soft crunchy, so you don't break your teeth. Awesome. I might sprinkle some of these on top. That'll look pretty cool. Maybe on some of them I'll put inside. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a couple different kinds. I'm going to make smaller ones. Let me move a few things here. Move that honey over. You know, really quick, I'm just going to do a 30-second cleanup here and get these my little garbage pail out of the way here. That's what I love about this cutting board. Okay, so now, which I think I'm gonna use the scooper. First things first, got a nice little teeny weeny bowl here of oil. And you know, you can, I, you know me, I like to usually use my spray oil. Haven't found my sprayer yet, it's in the box. So, you know, just dip your fingers in a little oil and just put them around your little cupcake things or muffin. Okay. Do a bunch of. So I love making the giant muffins, but right now, actually, I just found my giant muffin tin, but it's in a box still, and it probably needs to be washed out. Okay. So now, this is not going to take a whole scooper. Oops. Okay, so you want them, I like them kind of full. So it's probably about a quarter cup in each one, because this isn't even a half, it's not even half full. And we have our first batch, it's gonna go in the oven. Oops, I'm gonna take my seeds out. golden seeds, which I'm going to just stick up here to cool off. Ooh, that was hot. Now, we are going to really quickly, I'm going to make one set of really cute little baby bunt ones because I'm going to give some, give some to my neighbor because she gave me muffins. I'm going to let her try some of mine if they come out good. First, I'm going to test them. Never give a gift unless you taste it first. Because otherwise you're always like, oh, I'm just testing this out. Now some people oil and flour things and some people just oil. Um, I used to always oil and flour, but you know what? It doesn't always need. If you oil it, it actually comes out really nice. So I'm not sure. I'll have to do some research on that as to how and why. You know, I didn't taste the batter. Speaking of tasting, I always test the batter. So let's let's test the batter, have some fun with this. Let's see. Mmm. 
Yeah, it's not too sweet. It's just enough. Hmm. Could it be sweet? No, it can't be. It doesn't need to be sweeter. Because you know what I'm going to do? Oh, I forgot. I was thinking about it, thinking about it and then uh, I didn't do it. So we're going to do it now really quick. I like to, I was thinking of sprinkling some like turbinado sugar, just a couple granules on top. Sometimes when you just get that little tip flavor, it just comes out so nice. Hold on. Watch this really fast before these harden up on top. I'm going to put just a couple granules. on the top. That's one of the ways that you can get away with not using too much sugar, but it's still giving you the little bit of sweetness that we all crave. Just sprinkle a little, little healthy organic turbinado sugar on top. All right, that one is used, stuck in the honey. So I'm gonna grab one more spoon. So what I did was I put a blob in each one. Now I'm just gonna Put it around, see if it's enough. Because it's kind of a thick batter, but it's a nice movable thick batter, not one of those ones that doesn't move. Right, this actually, these are kind of big, so I'll put a little bit more in each one. These are going to be really cute. Now something like this, if I'd have thought ahead, I might have sprinkled a little turbinado sugar in the bottom. But you know, I can still do it on the, what will end up being the bottom, because the bottom then would be the top. But, you know, you think of things as you go along, and then you just run with it. So what I'm going to do now, even though this is going to be on the bottom, put a little teeny bit, and it'll be like a little surprise at the bottom. Angelina was trying to FaceTime me right in the middle of my show. What is she thinking? I should, should have picked her up on my computer. But, um, you know, we'll see here. Let's see. Don't forget which ones I did now because it's all brown on brown. Eh, there we go. Okay. So we've got these cute little things. We'll see how much they fluff up. And that's that. So I'm gonna make some more afterwards, but right now we're gonna go sit down and talk. Oh, you know what I am? Um, actually, no, you know what I'm gonna do really quick? I'm gonna go ahead and load this one up because what I wanna do now with the rest of these, I made those plain, I wanna show you. So I wanna put some, I like them with raisins. So I'm gonna put a little bit of golden raisins in, maybe just a couple of cranberries. I mean, there's pumpkin after all, you know, cranberries. Oh, it's pretty. Not too many. There might be one in each one. Uh, wrong lid. The one is like spinning. This is the lid for the cranberries. And then I'm going to throw some of the nuts on top. So let's do this. Let's just stir that in. And now I'm going to fill these babies. There we go. Put another little blob in that one. Another little blob in that one. Because that one's big, so we have to match them. Okay, so now, a little turbinado on top. Just a little drizzle. And then I'm going to put some pumpkin seeds on top. Because that's appropriate on a pumpkin muffin. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Sorry, I get silly that way. Let's see if I can fit them all in here. enough to probably do one more of the small trays so I'll do some more with this so I'll have some plain I'll have some with raisins and pumpkin seeds and we'll be all set I don't have enough let's see I've got a dozen little ones in there I'll probably do another six so this double recipe made me will probably end up making me 18 maybe a few more 18 small muffins and then six of those bigger ones which probably is the same equivalent <laughs> so anyway hold on let's go chit chat 
Ta-da! Here we are in my new space that I'm still trying to figure out what's going to be the best. But, um, you know, we're just doing what we can do. We're experimenting and learning and I've got so many new plans. I'm trying to make me straight here. I'm looking crooked. Um, I have so many different things that I want to talk about um, in life about just things and I, I'm not even sure where to start. I've made a list of all the new things I want to start the new show with and um, it's coming because I'm just, um, I'm so overwhelmed with everything that's going on around me, but I want to talk about stuff. So I want to recommend a couple of movies. There's a movie, it's a do actually there are two documentaries. One of them is called Happy. Um, it used to be on Netflix, and now I'm not sure. I think it's on something else. It might be on Amazon or on, uh, what might it be, on Hulu? But I think it's on Amazon Prime. Um, it's called Happy, and the logo is like um, clouds in the sky with a smiley face, so you can't miss it. So please watch the, move, the documentary called Happy. Now, there's a reason for this. There's another one um, that is called Minimalism. That's a little extreme, but it really makes a point. And I think it goes really well with happy. It's not about things, it's about people. So now I'm gonna come right back to the Rosetto effect. Um, the Rosetto effect is the phenomenon by which people live a longer, healthier, happier life by the connections they have in their life, not the things. So what I'm gonna tell you, what I've learned again, watching, the, um, myself go through all this stuff. We've got 31 years married, 21 years in the last house, 22 years in the last house, um, six kids, so eight people. It's a lot of stuff. Now, as a mom, okay, we get criticized for holding on to everything and we're the, we're the hoarders of the family. But you know what it is? We hold on to things for our kids. I've got the first soccer jerseys they ever wore. I've got their school papers. I've got all the stuff that I have, that the boxes that are labeled Dorina are things for the kids. So over this winter, aside from the junk I just got rid of, shoes that were outgrown that just happened to be in boxes in the attic because I used to hand things down from one kid to the next. All of a sudden you get to the last one and stuff is still in the attic and you don't have time during your daily life to go, well, let me just go through the attic and pull out a box. No, it doesn't work that way. Besides, then the kids threw all kind of crap in the attic and block everything. And so you're like, I ain't going in there. We had a walk-in attic. It was too easy. So now we don't have an attic and we don't have a basement. And I'm just loving it because it's forcing us to go through everything and get rid of stuff. I want a very simple, happy life. The kind I have when I'm in Italy and I live in four room, when that's eight, a four room house that has just what I need. And I am so happy there. Um, there's like one or two things. Like I would love to have my KitchenAid mixer there. But you know what? I don't even use it all the time because I do a lot of things by hand. And if you live the way they live, they make their pasta by hand. They make their bread by hand. I don't use my mixer to make bread. I make it by hand. We'll make bread one day soon. In fact, you know, I really want to try a pumpkin bread. That'd be kind of cool, huh? We'll put some of this zucca in the pumpkin dough. That'd be nice. So when you want to get like a savory one, it'd be really cool. Anyway, um, ooh, with pumpkin seeds on top. Wouldn't that be nice? Nice crunch on the outside. Mm. <laughs> Getting excited. Okay, anyway, but the point is we don't need half the stuff we have. In fact, probably more than half the stuff we have we don't need. Start going through your stuff and say, do I need this or do I want this? Keep the things you need and maybe a couple things you want, but that's it. It's the same way I taught my kids how to um, give me their Christmas list. Give me a list of needs, give me a list of wants. You'll get most of what you need and you'll get a couple things you want, but I'll decide or Santa will decide um, and it'll be a surprise. But needs and wants need to be differentiated. And what we've been taught in our society is that all these things we want, we've been taught that we need them. We need the bigger house, we need the bigger car, we need the bigger this, the more expensive that, the extra. Why do we have to have two of this or three of that? We don't need it. You know, so everything from towels and underwear to jewelry and cars to stuff, just stuff. Don't need it. You don't need seven million tchotchke things on the shelf. 
You know, if it's something from somebody won, like trophies. Oh gosh, we just went through boxes of trophies. The boys are like, I didn't win those, I don't want them. All the participation trophies from grade school, you know, elementary, preschool, elementary, grade, high, middle school. We got rid of them all. We kept the ones they won. The one where they won the tournament. The one where they won the shootout. The one where they won the individual or the team competition. Those are the trophies we've kept. Those are the ones that actually have value because it was actually commemorating something that you, you know, worked towards, worked hard for and achieved. You won the championship or whatever. So really pay attention to that stuff and do it now. Take one box or whatever a week and go through it because that's all you need to do. Little by little, you can simplify and minimize. So I urge you, stuff is not where it's at. Um, and as far as bigger houses, this house is probably one big room bigger than my old house. My old house had a living room, dining room, kitchen, four bedrooms, two bathrooms. This house has living room, dining room, kitchen. The only thing that this has is what I'm doing differently is our family room, which is off the kitchen, is going to be our living room. The side room over here that is full of boxes right now, you'll see it eventually when it's done, but is my officially my formal living room and my formal dining room. I'm sitting in the breakfast room or the daily eating room. That's not what this is gonna stay. The formal living room dining room is gonna be my dining room because that is where we gather. And that's gonna be one big room. My family room that is the informal living room. I don't need a formal living room. What the heck do I need? What do I need furniture with plastic on it? Nobody I know sits in their formal living room almost ever. So it's a waste of space and money. So we are gonna use our big dining room because there's eight of us plus someday six spouses, someday grandchildren, cousins, friends. I can feed easy 40 people in there and I would be so, that is what my life is about, having space to gather, okay? This little area here, I'm not sure yet, but I've got my easel behind me, you see that? That's not just there to hold that photo or that, that painting um, or print or whatever it is. Um, that's my actual easel. I'll be doing some painting in this nice little bright corner with the, when I open the shades, it's so nice and bright. So anyway, um, I think it's gonna be my area here. But um, really, and I have no basement, no attic. So actually probably in full space, I probably have the same amount of space. It's just laid out different. I wanna have a garage. But that's basically taking the place of our basement because the gym is in there and the tools are in there and all that stuff. No cars, nah, no room. So anyway, motorcycles though. Motorcycles are in the garage. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, have what you need. I knew people up in New Jersey who had seven bedrooms and three kids. I'm like, okay, I could have used seven bedrooms, so to speak, because I had six kids plus us, that's seven. But my kids shared rooms and they had bunk beds and they loved that. And sometimes they fought and sometimes it was my side of the room and your side of the room and sometimes who jumped off of who on to, from one bed to the next or the bunk bed down to the bottom. But that's what is there. My, my kids are so tight that I, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. I would not have wanted them to each have their own room. As nice as that sounds, and, but as they got older, they got their own room because who moved out and who did this or that, you know, so unfortunately the twins never got their own room. But, um, they did, they had a room that they shared and they probably would have shared anyway. I couldn't, they're, I still, they still live together. I can't pull them apart and I don't want to. I feel like we need to really pay attention to all the things in our lives because simplifying your life allows you more time to cook. It allows you more time to gather and come around the table together. So today, um, I urge you today's challenge is get rid of something. Um, not before you say hello to me here on the video. So say hi to me so I know you're there. If it's ever, you know, if it's your first time watching, please say it's your first time here because then I like to know that too because then I can say hi, welcome. Um, but um, please just do me that, you know, do me that favor, say hello, and, um, and then, uh, you know, hit the little bell at the top. Okay, so one of my friends in Italy, who's from England, my friend Michelle, she, she sent me some messages that I read late last night. I was dying laughing. She said I had her completely giggling. I had her giggling. I hope she was watching today. 
And her giggling with me holding the big zuka yesterday. <laughs> she said it looked like a French horn. <laughs> and then, of course, talking about the little dinghy bell. <laughs> she thought that was funny, too. I don't know. <laughs> so please hit the little... I've always called it the little dinghy bell at the top next to my name so that you get notified when I come live again, you know. But anyway, but that made me laugh. I smell muffins. So I'm going to go look really... Actually, I'll... Ooh, that was loud. Oh, and look what I just kicked by accident. The hubby's wine bottle, always next to his chair. I'm sitting in his seat. Hold on, I'm gonna take you with me. And we're going to go check on the muffins. The muffins, because I smell something and I hope I didn't burn them talking to you guys. All right, let's see here. Let's take a napkin. Ooh, look at those babies. Don't they look nice? These are the first ones I put in and they definitely, definitely look ready. So, Let's see if I can put you here right on the counter in front of me. Oh, I can. This is pretty cool. And let's check one of these babies out. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're definitely they're definitely done. Look at that. I could have put these in papers. Oh, they're too hot. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Oh. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, they smell delish but it's really too hot. But there it is. See, it's steaming. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna let those cool off. And um, hold on. I'm gonna let those cool off and uh, finish cook, the rest of them finish cooking. But if you're on, again, please say hi. Join the community that we have here in Dorina's Kitchen. And um, let's see if we can't uh, continue this on and get back to the table. So today, don't forget your challenge is get rid of something. We're going to simplify our lives and live the Rosetto effect, get our families back to the table and do it all starting right here, coming to you from Dorina's kitchen. Yes, I know I'm a dork. It's okay. Hubby loves me anyway. He loves telling me I'm a dork, but that, okay. We're not going to get into that right now. Um, have a great day. Mwah. Ciao everybody.